And then how do I know if it's um neither? If it's one. Okay. That does not happen. <laughs> as far as I remember. Okay. And it was four point two three eight eight. eight. Yeah. Does that work? Last. Yes. Okay. All right. Next question here is uh, the switching topics altogether and implicit derivatives. So um, these requires a little bit of explanation. The the degree the derivative of two x squared is the same as what we've always done. It's it's four x. You bring the two down times two, that's 4x. For the y, it's the same as the x. So you, you just bring the exponent down to become 6y. But whenever you have a derivative with respect to y, it's dy dx. You have to add in the dy dx in there next to it. You're multiplying by that. So whenever you have a derivative with respect to y, you end up getting dy dx. That's the big difference. The derivative of 2 is 0. Now you're solving for dy dx. Okay, so now, now it's really just an algebra. I thought problem. dy dx was just the derivative. Is that not it right? It is. Um, it's uh, it, it's just the, like the the what they're saying is that y is really a function of x. So when it's written this way, when it's not solved for y, you have to make this little adjustment here. You're adding the t okay. Yeah, you're, you're appending it to the y whenever you're taking derivative with respect to y. Okay, so we have minus 6y dy dx equals minus 4x. And then you divide by minus 6y. So dy dx equals 2x over 3y. So that's your that's your answer there for the first one. Okay, 2x. Right. Any questions on that? No. All right. So for the next one here, so this one here, you have to take a derivative just like we did before. Uh, so to do that, you might want to rewrite this slightly as 2y squared minus x to the 1 half power equals 14. Okay. And then when you're taking your derivative, just like before, when it's, when it's with y, you, you still use the same rules, but you have to append a dy dx to it. And then we're just using the um, the exponent rule for that, power rule for that. And then you have to solve for dy dx. Would okay, we start so gonna, moving the half over? Yeah, we, we would add the 1 half x to the minus 1 half power to both sides. So this becomes 4y dy dx equals one half x to the minus one half power. You divide both sides by four y. And then you, you guess we got to do a little simplifying here, but it ends up being, um, I don't know if you probably have lots of questions because it, it ends up being eight uh, y square root of x when you simplify that. If you have questions on that, happy to answer. How did... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, How did... I, I've, get there. Yeah, so uh, the steps here are that it's 1 over 2 x to the 1 half power over 4 y. And then this is really, you can multiply the top and bottom by 1 over 4 y. So that's where the 8 comes from. Okay. 2 times 4 is 8. And then x, x to the 1 half is really the square root of x. So like all this on the bottom cancels. 
and you're left with one on top, eight on the bottom, x to the one half is the square root of x, the y you just put in front. Okay. And then but that's not the answer. That's just like an intermediate step. So they give you this ordered pair 16, comma three. So you have to put that back into back into the uh the derivative there to get the slope. Okay. So it's uh, 1 over 8 times 3 times the square root of 16. Uh, 24 times 4 is 96, I believe. Um, and that's your slope. That's the slope of the, uh, of the tangent line. So it wants, it wants the equation of the tangent line. Uh, so the best form to use is always this y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And so you have your slope, and you actually have your point. Your point is up here. y minus 3 equals 1 over 96 x minus 16. And then if you notice the way it's written in the box, it's solved for y. So you just have to move this, this 3 over. You just add it to the other side. Hopefully it will take this. See if it'll accept that as your uh, as your answer there. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, that was right. Okay, so the next one here, rinse and repeat. This one's just more difficult. Oops, wrong one. All right, this one had, this one's more difficult. It's got a product rule, a derivative as part of it. Um, you'll also notice it doesn't give you the value of y. Like it's just more, more stuff. So they're giving you X though. Yeah. So if you put X in and X in, you get three Y cubed plus one times Y minus Y equals 375, one to the power of four. So it looks really bad, but these uh, two I, these two Y's cancel. One to the power of four is one. So it really just becomes three Y cubed equals 375. You divide by three, you get Y cubed equals 125. So Y equals five. Oh, okay. That's not the answer though. That is not the answer. That's just the point. The point is one comma five. So in the, in the previous problem, sorry for all the scrolling, is they give you the point. In mm -hmm. this problem, you don't have the points. So you have to find the point. Now you have to take a derivative okay. of this. All right, so this is nine y squared. And now the, the product rule here, this one's a little bit, bit tough. This is the whole F and G thing. Um, so it's 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 the first times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx, plus the second times the derivative of the first. That's the all like what we just did here is the product rule. Okay. Wait, I'm confused. So to find the derivative when it's x y, that's what you have. That's what you do. Yes. Is that a one? So there, x one. Yeah, the, the shorthand of it is is that it becomes x dy dx plus y. Like that's what you want to maybe remember. Okay. But then we got this minus y down here. So the derivative of that is minus one dy dx. And the reason is, is the derivative of y, if you were to treat it like an x, is just the coefficient. And then uh, you always have a dy dx when you when you uh Take that now on the right side it's like wait there's more yeah there's more you have to take it's four times 375 x to the four minus one power okay 
And then we, we still have to solve for dy dx. So let me know, let me know if I can proceed. Yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to write it. It's a lot. It's really a lot to uh, to try to navigate all this. Okay, so we're going to just move some stuff around. We're going to move the the non dy dx terms. So like this nine y squared and this y, we're going to move them to the right, and we're going to keep the d the, the dy dx terms on the left. And then on the left here, you factor out a dy dx from both. And then you divide both by this x minus 1. And there's your final answer. Now that's just oh, it's so bad. That's just the. Uh, the slope equation, you still have to put in your point, which was one comma five into the slope equation. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of I'm just trying to follow along. So we still like that's not the final answer. We still need to plug in still more to do. Yeah. I know you don't want to hear that, but that is okay. Uh so the okay. um it's 1500 times one cubed minus nine times five squared minus five over. That's not good. Uh, so there's a mistake because the derivative can't be undefined. So I don't know where it is. That's one of the problems with, with doing it this way is there's many places to go wrong. Let me, let me, let me check the derivative of this. Okay. Hopefully I'll find the mistake. Was it because there were two Ys? I know. I'm not sure. Okay. It's it's easy to have this happen. Uh yeah, I don't know. I really I really oh yeah. So I didn't put a dy dx here. That's why. <laughs> uh, all right, so apologize, just messed up bad here. Dy dx dy dx you have to put that is that the derivative right there yeah so basically everything from this line is this is not salvageable so i have just re so re okay so anytime there's a y that's when you put dy dx exactly yeah yep so it ends up oh. dy dx equals 1500 x cubed minus y over and then on the left here, you, you're going to factor out the 9y squared, the x, and the minus 1. And uh, that, is the, that is the derivative. So now we put in the point 1 comma 5 in. So, sorry, when it's n or 9y squared, because you know there's a xy, why is there x dy dx, and then the y stays the in the that's the product. It, it moves over. Like it, it subtracts over. Okay. But then you, you have these three terms on the left with dy dx that you factor out. dy okay. dx. Okay. All right. So the, the, we're putting these numbers in to get the slope. And so that becomes 299 over 45. And so you go back to your equation line y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And you put the numbers in. So you've got y minus 5 equals 299 over 40, 45 x minus 1. 
And since it asks for y equals, you move this, you add this five to the other side. So you get y equals 299 over 45 x minus one plus plus five like that. I'm trying to understand all the steps. A lot there. A lot there. Okay, that was right. Wow. <laughs> I figured there'd be a tiny bit of pushback on that. All right, <laughs> very good. So the the next problem. I think we worked out one like this, but it's it's really awful because it's like uh it's confusing because like which is x, you know, which is y. So if we if we treat this like it's dy dx like we've been doing, that means q is really y and p and x p is really x. So it's really seven x squared plus seven y squared equals eleven hundred. And that's what we're going to use here to find the uh the derivative stuff. Now, to answer this question, we're differentiating uh with respect to key p is the the variable and assume that q is a function of p so this is the answer to part part a okay. is that is that okay yeah no i think the next thing it asks for is the actual derivative um yeah it says find and interpret a derivative yeah, so we're going to take a derivative like we've been doing. So the derivative here is 14x plus 14y. Sorry, I have the wrong letter. There's supposed to be a 6 there. 12y dy dx equals 0. And then you solve for dy dx. So uh, you subtract the 14x to the other side. And you divide by 12y. And so dy dx equals negative 7 over 6xy, like that. And then we go back to the variables we were using. So x, x is really p. So it's minus 7p over 6q is the answer you're looking for. Okay. There's two options. Make is sure you're, you're, you're the, the rate one that says the D, DQ, D, DQ, DP. Yeah, it says um, DQ, DP is the rate of change of demand, or the other one is rate of change of price. Uh, I'd have to see it. Um, so if you want to share your screen, I can look at it. Okay. Or you can try both and see which one it works in. Okay, I'll do that. Well, sorry, could you scroll down? Yes. Okay. It was the rate of change of demand with respect to price. And then now it's asking how is DPDQ calculated? has four different examples or four different questions. Yep. So it's it's very similar to this one. So I'm going to do it in blue here. It's uh, it's that p is a function of q, and we're differentiating with respect to you. So th so that option, whatever whatever this option is in that next grouping, that's what you want to do. Okay. Okay. All right. And so now this time. This time uh, it's dy dx. So p is really y and, and q is really x. So it becomes 7y squared plus 6x squared equals 1100. And so the derivative here is 14y dy dx plus 12x equals 1100. You're solving for dy dx, sorry, equals zero. 
So you're going to subtract 12x from both sides. 14y dy dx equals negative 12x. And then you're dividing by 14y. So dy dx equals minus 6x over 7y. But we said that x is really q and y is really p. So that's how you make the adjustment back to uh, what we had. So I know there's two options. Um, it's the reverse or flip of the other one that you did. Okay. Is it always going to be like that? A flip or? Well, I don't think you get this question, but yeah, it, it is. It was a pretty hard question. There's the change of variables. All right. Do you have um, pictures for the rest of them? That, that's everything. Everything's that's all. That's all. But we grabbed from earlier, so you'll have to share your screen. Okay. okay. Sorry. I didn't... You should be co-host if you're not. You are. Okay. Great. So uh, I'll just grab some questions here. We'll do as much as we can. Okay. And you can. You can say, so I got that one. I got the next, whatever next one you want us to do. These aren't too bad. Uh, thank you for grabbing the drop down. That always helps. Okay. Got it. Uh, next one. All right. I uh, got it. Uh, I can do this you, one. You, you can rise. Yeah, know. these are there's online calculators for a lot of these. Same with this one. All right. And some of these are done with a calculator as well. So don't don't uh, like this is purely a calculator problem. Go ahead and go to the next one. All right, got it. You want to do more, or is that? Yeah, a couple more. Uh, so these go pretty quickly. All right. Got it. Oh. Uh, well, we'll should, do this one. You should. Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, so I'll just give you the answer. U is uh, 9x to the fourth minus 5. Oh. Wait, is this you? This thing right here? Inside parentheses, yeah. Oh. My, minus five. You need the minus five. Nope. Nope. Hey. It, it, it's it, oh. nope. it's nine x to the fourth minus five is you. Oh, sorry. Okay. And then the derivative is 36 x cubed. Yes, that box there. Yes, perfect. Like that? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, you can find oh. a calculator for that. Can I find a calculator for that? Is yep. Z just all of, all of these? You just choose it. You use an X and change your variable. Keep going. All right. Let me just share my screen here. Make sure. Okay. I can talk you through a few at the end if if we get done with all this. All right. Okay. So the uh, wonderful problems you've posed here for us. Um.
Yeah, so this one's, this one's just terrible. So the it's it's kind of like what we were doing before, except now x is also a function of, of another variable. So like when you take the derivative with respect to x, you now have to add in a dx dt. But to kind of make it more problematic, the the three x y is product rule. So it's it's the first times the derivative of the second, which is derivative of y is one dy dt plus the derivative of 3x is 3 dx dt times y okay. minus 7 dx dt plus 15y squared dy dt equals 0. And so what I would do is I would, I would put in the numbers now. All right. And five. Minus seven and times negative 20. Like that. Like, and so uh, 15 dy dt, and then you got 60 my, uh, plus 140 plus 15 dy dt. So this ends up being uh, 200. You can move that to the other side. So you have 30 dy dt. Those, those two combine equal minus 200. Divide both sides by 30. And you get dy dt equals negative. Those cancel 20 over 3. Okay. See, if that, see if that'll work for you. Yeah, that works. All right, perfect. All right. The next one here is basically the same thing. You're just taking the derivative. Um, so the derivative here is 0.4x dx dt. This is probably the easiest problem we'll do all day. X is, uh, X is 80, 80 units. And dx dt is this 19. Now, how you know that is it says units per month. Okay. And that's how I know it's. Yeah, because uh, it's a rate of change. It's always, the rates are always something per unit time. Okay. And so this is uh, 0.4 times 80 times 19, which is 608. Um, it's positive, so it's increasing. Okay. And if it were negative, it'd be decreasing. Yes, exactly. All right. All right. Next problem here. I mean, if you read some of these scenarios, they're pretty uh, negative here. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so the... Uh, there, there are a lot of words here to basically tell you, you got to take the derivative of this thing. Yeah. Uh, they're they're giving you they're giving you the value of t, and they're giving you what's what we're going to call d, d, d t, d t, which maybe doesn't sound right, but that's that's what it is. So that the second one's the rate. It says per month. So um, the hard thing here, I think, is taking the derivative now. Um, we've kind of gotten away from like, what would you actually see on the test? And we're just trying to get these done, but, um, th there's a few other ways to do it. If, if you were on the test, it was multiple choice, but you, you just take the derivative of this, um, the two comes out in front, you subtract one to get 
one here, keep the inside function, the derivative of 100, which is a constant, is, is zero, and you append this dt dt to it. And then you substitute in uh, these, these numbers here. So we had like 10, 10, 20, 4, looks like it's 24. Okay, and that's from, okay. Did we, oh, never mind, yes, we did, okay. That says it's wrong. That 20 divided by five is four times six is 24, end of May. Oh, that's 11. I see. I missed. So it's 22 over 5 times 6. Yeah. Uh, what is that? 132 over 5. Try that. Yeah. Okay. All right, any questions that before we transition? Um, no. Go on. You, you email these me, right? Yeah, I send you the notes at the end. Okay. No, check your spam if you don't see it. Okay. And mark not spam. That helps Helps me. Okay. Yeah, I, I did that for the last one and sent. Yeah, well, I had a student one time, like, they, like, oh, wait, you didn't know you sent, uh, you sent the last notes, but I'm like, Oh, yeah, like, yeah we, uh, emails the for the time. semester. Yeah. yeah, right. Um, oh, this one's a problem. We need to not do this one. This is a problem with uh, another one. So I'm going to skip this one and go to the next. Um, okay. All right. So velocity is the integral of acceleration. So you're you're finding what's called the antiderivative of five p squared plus four vt. So the rule here is that you add one to the exponent. So it becomes, and then you divide by the new exponent. And then there's a plus C. So the, the four doesn't have a variable, so you append one to it. So this okay. is your velocity function. And then they tell you that V of zero equals three. That means when you put zero in for T, you get, you get three. So these go away, you know, anything times zero, zero power, all zero, so C equals three. Would you just plug in um, five times three or no? No, no, zero, zero is the T variable. Oh, never mind, sorry. Okay. So is it? Uh, so, the, so the answer is that that, that C is three uh, so that the answer here is this line right here, five T cubed over three plus four T plus three. And then we just solve that. That's it. That is the answer. Oh, oh okay. Okay. So the uh, next question here says an object is dropped from a small plane. Okay, we don't care about that. Um, so the acceleration function is minus 38 dp. Uh, so it's minus 38 P plus C is the velocity function, but they tell you that V of zero equals zero. Zero equals minus 38 times zero plus C. So it goes away. Um, so C equals C equals zero. 
right? And then, um, so the velocity function is is just is just uh, minus thirty eight t. So then to find position, position function, you have to integrate the velocity function. So this becomes minus nineteen t squared plus c, and that's when it tells you the initial height is six thousand one hundred and fifty six. Um, from solving that. Well, it's it's s of t equals that. So it's it's six one five six equals minus nineteen times zero squared plus c. So c ends up equaling the six one five six. And okay. so the final answer for s of t is minus nineteen t squared plus six one five six. So that's the first box. And then I believe the second box, it asks how long does it take to hit the ground? So you're setting this equal to zero and you're solving for, for T. So you move the 6156 over and you're dividing by minus 19. And then you take the uh, the square root of that. And uh, does it say it around or does that work out? Maybe it works out perfectly. Um, it says simplify. Yeah, it ends up working out to 18. Uh, okay. Which is which, uh, it's pretty nice. Right. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so that's everything I have. Um, if you want to share your screen, maybe we can do one question, depending on how quick it is, or I can help you find some calculators. Um, okay. One of the ones I really like is uh, Symbolab. Uh, there's Mathway, PhotoMath. Like, there's a million of them. Do you have something you like using for these? Yeah, I have. Well, yeah, I have Chegg and I have Mathway. Okay, use Mathway more than Chegg. Chegg's good for, like, the word problems, but not the, just the, the like... We'll do the integral take the derivative stuff all right okay we do unfortunately have to stop here i know a little late start okay. but